Uh, uh, we've called David Rudine to be our interim pastor. He's going to serve probably at least till December is the plan. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're delighted to have him with us, and we were able to work that out. Uh, we're looking forward to his word not only today, but for the next few months. Um, the only other issue is volunteers. We're still looking for some volunteers. We'd like to get some greeters who could be at the door greeting people as they come in. We'd like to have a couple of people up there every week if we can. We need one other person to volunteer on a once every five, once every two or three month basis for uh, our cafe. We have four right now, which is great, but today was the fifth Sunday, so we need someone to plug in there. And then one of our biggest uh, issues right now is we really don't have an active teen ministry. So Drew Lazara has been filling in in the teen room. Uh, she's going to be able to do that about once a month. So we're looking for like maybe three more volunteers to sit in there with the teens and just run a teen program for us. If that's something you feel called to, just let us know. We'd love to talk to you about it. And with that, I'm going to invite Dave to come up and finish his sermon series, Home Run Life. Here's Dave. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We, we went from a, a speaking gu- bass player to a speaking guitar player, I tell you. The talent overflows in this place. But good morning, everybody. Let, let me begin just by taking us to, the, to a, a word from, from Ephesians chapter 5. I just want to set the stage what I want to talk about today. Listen to what Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8, 14 and 17 says. For you were once darkness, but now, now you are light in the Lord. So live as children of light. This is why it said, wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Now, there's a, I, I want to unpack that just in, in a little bit, but, but I want to, first of all, take you back as we're getting to know each other just a little bit, you, you may look at me and you say, now there is a world-class athlete when you look at me. You probably, no, it's, it's not meant to be a joke. But I grew up, we've been talking about baseball the last four weeks in the home run life, and I grew up playing baseball and playing all kinds of sports. And, and in, case, in case you doubt, t- take a look at this, look at that right there. There we go. Mount Prospect Little League right there. Exactly, you're there, there's your athlete standing in front of you, you know? And, and at some point in my baseball career, I played every position in baseball except for catcher. I could never get around the idea of somebody swinging a big wooden thing about inches from my face. And so I never sat behind, the, sat, sat behind home plate, never played catcher, but I played everything else. And so I'm very well-versed in the rules of the game. And if you've been around, if you don't know anything about baseball, hopefully over the last few weeks, you've understood a little bit more about baseball, it, enough to know this, that you start off at, what do we call the, the, the first place where you begin? Home plate, right. And after you're at home plate, then you go to where? First base. And then after first base, you go to? You're familiar with this concept. Okay, second base. And then you go to? And then from third base, the goal is to? Get home, slide in home and score and live a home run life. And so that's, that's what we, we come to understand. Now, when you're in Little League, it, it can take a little time to, to adjust to this idea. You may have seen it on, on TV and you get kind of the gist of it. You know there are bases out there. But sometimes it takes a little, uh, there's a growth curve. I mean, take, take a look at these kids here. Have, have a little hard time kind of figuring this out. All right. (laughs) Third bit, maybe back home. There There you go. Gwen to first. High five. There you go. Okay, get get there. 
All right. So you get, you get the gist. You know, you throw, we give grace to kids like that. You say, okay, it takes a little while to learn this. And, but hopefully over the last four weeks as we've been going through this, you've been learning ab- about, uh, about how, how baseball operates and more importantly about, about how God grows us up. And that's really what we've been talking about, that it, this becomes kind of a, a picture, an illustration about how want, God wants to grow us up in, in, our, in our faith. Now, but here's what I'm wondering. Again, it's uh, you've gotten to know me a little bit. You've seen my, uh, seen my baseball career there. And now I want you to answer this. How many of you are in here that are, would call yourself a rule breaker? Are there any rule breakers in the room here? Rule, okay, yeah, you're my people. There's my people. I'm more, all right, we got rule break. All right, those, you're my people. Uh, the, the rule, you like to push the boundaries a little bit. You know, somebody, somebody tells you you can't do something. And so you say, watch me, and you, know, and you double down on it, and you do it even more. I mean, that's exactly what we do as, as rule breakers. Now, for years, and for the last four weeks, in fact, we've been, the, the church has been showing people how, how to grow people up into Christ. There's a pattern that is described in the Bible, and we kind of get a picture of it. And the home plate is all about connecting with God. It all starts off with, with submitting to him and and being dependent on him and winning at dependence on him and it's giving our life and committing to him and following him, accepting him and, and, and tapping into his power and tapping into his purpose. And that's what home plate represents. And then first base is the character base. That's the personal base where God then wants to do something inside of you. He wants to change you. He wants to mold you and change you and shape you into the person that he created you to be. And, and he wants you to win at character. And then from there, he also wants to grow us up on the second base, which is the, that's the community. That's the people side where he says, you don't just do life on your own, but we do it in community with other people. And he wants you to win with others. And he wants you to learn how to, how to build relationships with others. And then he takes us to third base, which is what we talked about last week, which is the performance base. And this is where we win in terms of our results and what we do. And, and we, we want to love what we do. And when we love what we do, and then we do it for the glory of God and for his purposes, then that brings us home and that gives us the home run life. That's what we've been talking about, how to live a home run life. But an aha moment came for me when it was pointed out to me, as I've described to you a, a little bit, I've been teasing this for the last few weeks, that the world does not run the bases according to God's design. Now, that may not be a shock to you. <laughs> this, uh, understand that the world has a different way of doing things, but that's, that's the reality. That, that there is tremendous pressure in our world, not, not to run that way, but to go right to third base. And it's all about success. Success financially, success in your career, success in terms of your, the accolades and your recognition and who you are and what you become known as and, and all of those kinds of things. And so the world, on the, on the journey to third base, to get to third base, they will compromise and even forego what happens on the other side of life. They forego their eternity. They don't worry about home plate. They will compromise their integrity They will walk over relationships and even compromise and break their family just so they could get to third base and they could win there. That's the way the world runs the bases. And we wonder why we're in such a a messed up condition. And so when you start to understand the the admonition that Paul gives us in Ephesians where he says, in Romans where he says, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world. It starts to hit me between the eyes that the world does run the, a, a different pattern. The world runs the bases backwards. And so now that phrase in Ephesians chapter five hits me uh, e- even more intently, where he says, be wise, Christians, be wise in the way you act toward people who run the bases differently. Be smart. Don't be foolish. And it gets me thinking, am I being wise? Am I being wise in believing and operating like, no, there is only one way to run the bases. This is the right way. I don't want to look at anything else. I don't want to consider anybody else that runs it the other way. I don't want anything to do with them. Am I wise in the way I act toward people who run the bases differently? Now, don't misunderstand. I'm not suggesting that the way we've been running the bases and the way God wants us to run the bases is wrong. I mean, that's what I've been teaching for the last four weeks is that this is the way God grows us up. He wants us to run the bases that way. 
I'm just saying that it makes sense that there's more than the one way that I have relied on and many of us have relied on to run the bases. And we only see the world through that lens and through that set of rules. So for me, it brought clarity and it brought harmony to what I've always felt was the way that God just wired me. And I, I can't speak for anybody else, but I just always thought like this. It, it was, there's something about pushing back on the rules, pushing back on what everybody says, you have to do it this way, and running outside the base path it just started to make sense for me a little bit. Now, for others of you who, are, who like to follow the rules and you want to do things exactly the right way all the time and, and don't want to consider anything else, now, this may push you just a little bit, but I'm okay with that. Because more importantly than just pushing rules for the sake of pushing rules or being a rule breaker just because you kind of want to thumb your nose at authority and you want to say, ah, nobody tells me what to do, that, that's not always based on a, in a, on a very spiritual level. Sometimes for me, it just comes out of just like, ah, oh, you tell me to do something, I'm not going to do it. You can, you're not the boss of me. You know? and, and I think that there's more sin to that than there is strategy oftentimes. At least it has been for me. And so rather than just saying, oh, I'm just a rebel, I'm just an outsider, I just want to do things differently, I, I like what Paul says in Ephesians 5 when he reminds us that we are to be, as Christ followers, the light of the world, and the church is called to be the light. We're supposed to be a light. We're supposed to be salt, helping spiritually lost people who are far from God, disconnected from God, help them to find God. That's what we're called to do. It's, it's who we are. It's what we do. Because of what the Bible says, that we are convinced of eternal life. We are convinced that there is more to this life than just what we see. And we are compelled by God's love because he has demonstrated grace to us the way we kind of run the bases like that little t-baller, you know. We're compelled by God's love. And more importantly, even, we're more we're committed to being Christ's ambassadors, and here's what I've learned is that God has uniquely placed all of us throughout the world. He's uniquely placed us throughout, let's just say, Chicagoland, throughout this community. And what I've come to believe, and there's a whole story behind this, and there's a whole journey that I've been on myself, but I've come to believe that there are seven streams of influence in this community. In fact, in any community, in fact, in any country, where when you push on these streams, when the, where these streams flow, society goes. As they flow, so goes the world. The primary mission areas that have much to do with the way that this world goes. I think there are seven key areas. And I'm going to talk more about them. I'm going to unpack them just a little bit, but just you, you, can, you can see them. I think I've got a graphic here. It's business, education, government, arts and entertainment, media, faith, and family. So I want you to start thinking about those streams of influence and, and, and where maybe God has placed you strategically in the world. Because we are all undercover agents, so to speak. We are ambassadors. We are ambassadors to the kingdom, for the kingdom of God. Called to be a part, to blend in with the rest of society. As if we're just like everybody else in many ways. But yet we're cleverly disguised as teachers. As salesmen. As computer programmers. As real estate agents as construction workers, as chiropractors, as harmless retirees. <laughs> We're cleverly disguised. <laughs> a guy by the name of Kevin Myers wrote a book called Home Run Life, and he, he was the one that kind of introduced me to a lot of this concept. And, and he says this, wherever God has you on the map, God has you on mission. Think about that. Wherever God has you on the map, that's your mission. That's your mission place. In other words, wherever he has you in your place of work, your place of business, in your neighborhood, in, in the, the parks that you hang out in, the recreation that you, that you participate in, he has put you somewhere on, on the map in this world. And wherever that is, you're on mission. You are an ambassador. 
You are an undercover agent for the kingdom of God. And so when Paul says, make the most of every opportunity, that opportunity very well may be the very stream of influence that you find yourself in these days. And that that phrase, make the most of every opportunity, it actually is a term that carries with it the idea of of going to the store and finding a bargain. You know, when you you find something, you say, this is too good to pass up. I've got to snatch this up. I'm not going to let this sale go by. A few weeks ago, I was was driving by uh, the Woodman's grocery store by our house, and and I saw the huge lines of people. I was just going to go there to, to get some gas. Huge lines of people. I mean, it was backed up, and there was, it, there was all kinds of traffic jams. Nobody could get in. Nobody could get out. It was, a, it was locked down, and cars all over the place because they had the lowest gas of any place in the area by a long shot. I mean, it was like by a dollar. I mean, it was a huge amount. And people were saying, I am not going to drive by here with an empty tank. I am going to fill up. I'm going to make the most of this opportunity. And so if you've ever stood in line for something like that, and you've waited for that bargain deal, to wait for that gas that, that drops down, or you find that shirt on sale, or you find that car on sale, or you find something, you say, I got to make the most of this. You know exactly what Paul was talking about when he says, make the most of every opportunity as an ambassador, as an outsider, as a, as a beacon of light in, in the community, in the way that you deal with people who run the bases backwards. So I want you to think about where has God placed you? In what stream of influence has God placed you? Now, I'm going to make this easy for you. You guys are here. This is like in bingo, you know, like you get that center, that center mark there. All right, you're in church right now. Now, just because you're in church, I get it, doesn't mean that you're, you, you may be experimenting, you may be kind of exploring, you may be cynical and skeptical yourself, but you're here but I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to give you that center bingo mark right now and say at least you're, you're probably at least a part of the faith community because you're a part of what's going on here. You're exploring just a little bit. But I want you to think about what, what other areas might God have placed you and connected you. Because here's what I believe. is that God has placed the church in the center of those streams of influence. I know we have faith on the outside there, but I want you to really think about faith being part of that, the center of that. And, and from that center place emanates all of these streams. This is where the influence flows out from a place like this, a gathering like this, a community like this. It, it flows out into the world to be kingdom influencers in the world. That's, I believe, how God has designed it. And God has built us so that we would do discipleship forward This is how you learn to follow God, what we've been talking about. You you connect with God, you you win with character, you win in community, you win in terms of your competence and what you're doing in your world, and then you do that for the kingdom of God and you live on his purpose. But he has dispersed the church into multiple streams. When you leave here, you're going to go out into some of those streams of influence where you are on, on mission as an undercover agent, an ambassador for the kingdom of God. A few years ago, I had opportunity. I was doing a leadership training in Paraguay, and I had opportunity to be invited to the home uh, of the, the United States ambassador to, to Paraguay. I know it sounds all hoity-toity, but it really wasn't that big a deal. But it was a big, just big kind of a, a dinner. A bunch of us were, were invited there, and I had a chance to meet her and talk with her, and I asked her you know, what she did and, and, and what, what that was all about. But you think about what an ambassador, an ambassador for the United States does. They are a representative from the United States, and they are dispersed all throughout the world to be influence in that unique place for the United States. That's what an ambassador essentially does. And you and I are are called to be ambassadors. We are dispersed from this place to be ambassadors in whatever stream of influence or streams of influence that you find yourself as an ambassador for the kingdom of God. So let's just walk through them just a little bit. So you, again, you understand the faith community in, in many ways, but, but uh, it's more than just coming to church, but it's somebody that understands how God wants to run the bases. And if you, if you get that on some level, yeah, you could consider yourself part of that stream. You now know that, that this is what God wants to do. This is how God wants to grow us up. 
And if you're walking in that journey of faith, then you understand, hey, you're part of the stream of influence of the faith community. What you do on your own, what this church does together, the, the kinds of things that, that journey does together. So that's that. Another stream is business. Now, you may find yourself a business leader, business owner. You may be a manager. You may be a supervisor. You may be um, just a, a worker at some business throughout the week. And that's, the, that's a big part of where you spend a lot of your time in the business community. There are hundreds, thousands of kinds of businesses and business roles that, that you might be fulfilling at any given moment. But maybe that's where you spend your time. Maybe that's the, the people that you interact with, with people that are in the business community. Now, might be the education stream. And when you think about education, of course, we think about a teacher. You, you may be a teacher. And, and maybe that's what you do. But, but I want you to expand even beyond that. Because it may be, maybe, you're a, maybe you work in a, in a school system. Maybe you're a part of, of something that way where you're an administrator or, or even a, a classroom uh, volunteer. I don't know if you've ever gone volunteer in a, in a school part of the PTA or anything like that. You, you could be a part of the, the education stream. If those are the relationships that you have, if that's where you spend your time, that may be one of your streams of influence. It could be government is another stream of influence. And again, we think about elected officials, and certainly it includes elected officials, but you don't have to run for office to be an influencer in the government stream. When you understand it on a broader scale, this, this includes things that, that go beyond just elected officials, people that work in, in any kind of social services, or maybe you're, you're part of a, the police department or fire department or, or the, the military in some way. That's arguably part of the, the government. Uh, may, maybe you're on a board. Maybe you're on, a, uh, on a, you know, some kind of an elected board within the, the community in some way. The list goes on and on. But, but government, you understand it on a broader scale that way. Let's talk about arts and entertainment. I mean, we, we know on some level that that includes things like music and, and film and, and, and art, certainly, and you know, drawing and performance and dance and, and all those kinds of things. Maybe, maybe you spend a lot of time there. Maybe that's a hobby that you have. Maybe you're a part of a dance studio or maybe you're part of a music studio or, or some, something. Maybe you've got friends. Maybe you go out and you, you play on the weekends. I know there's many of you that do that. And, and you go and you're part of a band, you're part of a group, and you're, you're singing and you're dancing and you're performing and you're, you're living in that world and you've got friends and you've got... In, influential opportunities in the, that environment. That's the arts and entertainment. God has some ambassadors in the media. Now, again, when we think of media, you may immediately think of, well, I, I'm not a news anchor. I don't, I don't work for WGN or NBC, or ABC or CBS or any of those. I'm not broadcasting the news, but it's, it's even beyond that. When you think about the media, this includes branding and marketing and advertising and it could be TV or radio or anything along those lines. E even you can expand into social media. We all kind of dabble in that just a little bit. There's an element of media influence that way. And then, of course, there's the family stream of influence. And if you are part of a family, maybe you live in a neighborhood where there's lots of kids around and maybe your house is one of those houses where, where kids just kind of gravitate and they just come. And maybe you've got a lot of friends and maybe you're part of a... a a parent group or a mom's group or a dad's group or, or something along those lines and, and you're having opportunities to influence in that arena as well. So you get an idea about what all those different things are. You understand that when you leave here, you're gonna go and you're gonna be a part of one or multiple ones of those streams of influence. And those are so important because as those streams of influence go, so goes the rest of the world. They have a huge impact on what gets said, what gets talked about, what gets done, what gets prioritized, what gets paid attention to, what gets forgotten. There is a huge amount of influence that happens in a community through those seven streams. What I want you to get is that the edge of evangelism, that big E word that a lot of people freak out about because they think evangelism is the guy that holds the sign at the corner and yells at people, turn or burn, you know? <laughs> like, you gotta turn or burn, baby. No, evangelism is not what happens within the four walls of the church. Or A lot of times that's the other side of it. If, if you're not thinking about the sign person, you're, you're thinking about, well, evangelism is I just invite my friends to church. Just invite them to church, invite them to church, drag them to church, drag them to church. Well, that's part of it. That's not evangelism. 
Evangelism, when you understand, is not what happens within the four walls of the church. It's, it's when the people who are the church actually leave this gathering and get dispersed into those seven streams. That's evangelism. That's, that's what we're called to do. Now, there's some things that we can do together, and there's a, that's a part of it here, but, but that's a very narrow part. It's a very small part of it. So my question for you is, what stream of influence are you in? And, and you understand here, discipleship is what we've been talking about for the last four weeks. That's how God grows us up. That's how God disciples us. But evangelism is running the bases backwards. Evangelism takes a little different turn and go, goes a different, a different direction. And we live, as we've said, in a backwards base running society because that's how people tend to hear that's how they tend to connect that's what people who are far from god people who don't have a relationship with him that's how they tend to hear they tend to hear in a backwards kind of a way they're they're over here listening from a third base perspective and i don't know if you were like me if your experience has been the same but when I was growing up, the generation before me tended to do evangelism in a very confrontational way. And it looked a little bit like this. Are you going to heaven? Are you a Christian? You need to give your life to Christ. You need to give your life to Christ right now. What's, what's preventing you from giving your life to Christ? And then they say, now, here's what I want you to do. I want to drag you to first base, and, and God wants to work on you, and he wants to turn you upside down and shake you and, and change you and you make you into something different. And then you drag them to second base, and then you drag them to third base, and then you... That's the way evangelism was often done. Pretty confrontational. Meet somebody and say, you need to know God, and you tell them what's wrong with them, and you say, you, you need to go get fixed. Get, get over here on, third, on first base. And all I'm saying is that in a post-Christian, biblically ignorant world, a cynical, skeptical world who looks at the church with the stink eye, what do you want? What are you doing? What are you asking for? We actually gain influence going backwards because that's how people hear. That's what they're listening for. And I think it begins for us on the left-hand side of home plate, where instead of telling them that they need to know the love of God, we practice the love of God. And we show them. And, and, and we, we give. That's why we give ourselves away. We, we add value to other people. I think that's what our call is to do. That's what we're called to do. And I don't just mean give money. I mean give ourselves. Give, give of our whole life. Give more than you take. I can't tell you how many conversations I've had with people when, when I'm trying to introduce them to the church that we were starting before. We started in Algonquin. It was People would say, you know, the, the church is always asking for what we can do for them. And the church has kind of gained this reputation over the years, over the, over the generations, that the church is all about come to our things, sit in our seats, give to our offerings, participate in our programs. We need you for this. Can you give us a break on that? Can you give us this for free? Can you do this for us for free? Can you bend the rules for us on this? Can you let us slide? Church is notorious for that. And people know that. And so they look at us with a cynical, skeptical eye, like, what, what do you want now? What kind of deal are you looking for now? And that's why I think it's incumbent on us to be givers more than we're takers. Give of the whole of our life. Give ourselves away. I think that's the essence of God. For God so loved the world that he what? Gave his one and only son. He didn't wait for us to get our act together. He said, I'm going to give to you first. I'm going to go first. And then you go. Jesus told us in Matthew 5, let your light shine before men so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. In other words, we're supposed to make the world brighter and we're supposed to shine a light and, and make it better than because we give like nobody else. 
we add value like nobody else. What, what, what can we do? How can we serve you? What, what can we do for you? How can we make what you're doing? How can we make it better? In other words, the essence of give is the essence of great relationships. If you give more than you take in your marriage, you'll have a pretty good marriage. If you take more than you give, it's why marriages fall apart. Because it's all about just competing, competing uh, co- competition for, for time and energy and resources. And it just breaks down. That's how the world works. It's the heart and it's the nature of God that we are that kind of people. And the world appreciates people that will give. And as Christ followers, we're supposed to give ourselves away, to add value to other people. To, they're over here on the performance base. And our call is to figure out how can we add value to you? That's, what you're, that's all that you're hearing. That's all you want to listen, that you got tunnel vision on that. You got tunnel hearing on that. Okay, let me speak to you in your language. An ambassador says, I, I, this is not where I live, but I want to, I want to come visit you here and, and I want to connect with you and I want to add value to you so we can build a relationship so that I can influence you down the road. That, I mean, that's ultimately what it's all about. As Christ followers, we're supposed to give ourselves away and add value to others. So let me just give you a couple of examples. I could talk all day about this. I won't. I can talk all day about this. About areas in my life over the last several years about how God has used me and called me into different streams of influence. And I'll give you one of them. One of them is, is clearly been in the business community. I, I've built relationships with business leaders and, and business organizations over, over the last decade plus, um, go, going way back to time that I was at the church before and just building relationships with, with people that are in the, the business community. Um, got involved in, in our chamber of commerce. I started as a volunteer and I just built relationships there and I got asked to be on the board and I got from the board, I got asked to be on the, the executive board and, and from there I got actually hired for a period of time as the executive director of our chamber of commerce. And I just, I love, love those people and I love to influence them. I love to be around them. I love to be a part of, of, of what they're doing. I, I love, to, love to be a part of, of that, that kind of idea. Oh, I see we got, got this up here. This is, <laughs> when, when I talk about my, when I talk about my, uh, my background, my, my background in ministry was not somebody that grew up thinking, oh, I want to be, a, I want to be in ministry. That was my, my goal. No, it was more like a cruel joke, I think, a, a God's cruel joke on me. And it's articulated in this Facebook message I got years ago, a friend of mine from high school, and he, he, he writes back and he goes, Dave Rudin is a Christian, a Christian pastor for the last 20 years? Who'd have thunk? You know, I thought, that summarizes my life right there. Who'd have thunk? You know, just ask any of my family, who'd have thunk? Who to thunk it? But when you, put you open yourself up and you say, God, where do you want to use me? That's exactly what God did. Is he used me in, in different arenas. He's used me in the business community uh, to, to develop leaders and to train leaders and to work with organizations. About 2004, 2005, I got involved. I was telling Kim earlier, I got involved in a, in a classic rock band. I got invited to play keyboards for a band, and, and I started building relationships with, with people there, and, and it morphed into another band and into another band, and, and where I, I play out too on weekends, and I'm oftentimes out on Friday night, Saturday night, or sometime during the week of playing instruments and playing, singing in different bars and locations, and, and, and you start to build relationships with people there. You start to build a, a you, you understand that stream of influence and those those friendships that you build when you're connecting with people in a different environment outside of the church, outside of the the 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. See, the world is so wrapped up in the only thing that they do is is work and they just want to make a living. And yeah, of course, we're supposed to make a living, but we know that there's more, right? Right? We know that there's more to that. We're like, okay, let me just meet you where you are. I know this is important to you. You want to make money. You want to be good. You want to do the best. I get it. We, we, want to, we want to help you to do that. And you earn influence that way to be a catalyst for transformation. We're called to be ambassadors. We're called to be undercover agents. So, so what happens is 
You, you run to third base. You run to this competence base, this success base. And we start asking the question, what can we do to help you? How, how can we add value to you? What, what can I do? If it's in the business community, how can I be the best salesman possible? How can I be the best part of your team? How can I help you to get what you want? Isn't that often where Jesus began? He said, what is it that you need? What is it that you want? And people say, oh, I, I want this. And you're like, okay, let, let me meet you there. He didn't start off oftentimes with the, with the spiritual lesson, like, well, let me fix you first. He said, no, 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 what, what's, what's on your mind? I, I know you are tunnel vision, you are focused, you, you are hell-bent on getting this done. Uh, let me help you with that. And, and then what ends up happening is, as you do that, you, you begin to build relationships with people. And, and you find yourself now at second base where you're, you're not just coworkers, you're not just people that are on the same team, same organization, but now you've kind of become friends and you kind of, maybe you even hang out just a little bit. Maybe you, maybe you talk outside of work, maybe you talk outside of that, that uh, stream of influence right there and, and you're just becoming now friends in addition to what you're doing over there. And then what interesting things starts to happen is when you start to build relationships with people at second base, they oftentimes, not always, but they oftentimes will invite you into their first base, very personal things that are going on. And you, you, you start to find out and you start to share on a deeper level, a heart to heart, like what, what, what makes you tick. So when you help people get better at third base, you add value to them and you actually care about them at second base, People tend to invite you to that first base. And when you get to be involved in a conversation like that, at some point, then you pull out your ambassador badge and you say, whoa, you know, I happen to run the bases differently than everybody else does. I just think differently. It comes out of my faith. It comes out of, you know, what, what God has done in my life. And you say, let, let me tell you about how I run the bases and, and why I run the bases that way and why how God has changed my life because of it. I used to run that way too. Believe me, I get it, I understand. But man, now I'm over here and I run the bases differently now. And it doesn't make me better. It just says it's made my life better. That's all. And he's the one that taught me how to live by his design. When I had this aha moment, I happened to be working at the time at the Chamber of Commerce, surrounded by business leaders and organizational leaders all the time. Let me just tell you a couple ways that this played out, just so you can kind of put some meat on this, this bone just a little bit. At the Chamber of Commerce, we got involved in, in a lot of heated discussions at one, during this season that things were, were developing, and and it got pretty contentious, and there were a lot of heated board meetings. You ever been in those kinds of meetings, you know, where everyone's kind of jockeying for position, and I know this, and I know that, and, and my experience, and I built this business, and here's what I, and they're puffing up their third base their resume. You know, here's who I am, and, and I just kind of sit back, and I just kind of listen and watch and everything. And, uh, and one of the board members, Teresa, pulled me aside after several meetings like this, and she said, Dave, because we had built a relationship, friendship, Enough where she said, I gotta ask you, when we're in those contentious board meetings, everybody else is fluffing their feathers and getting irate and everything, and you're just been kind of calm and just kind of listening and just kind of chime in, level headed, never lose your cool. And she goes, How do you do that? Door just opened up. Let me tell you about how I run the bases. Third base does not define me. I'm defined by something different. I, I, just, I run the bases differently. I just think differently. I act differently. I have different priorities. It doesn't matter like it does to everybody. I, I'm concerned about all those things. It matters to me, but not at the level that it does to everybody else. And so I, I don't feel like I need to puff myself up. I don't need to remind everybody how successful I am or anything like that. Opened up an interesting conversation. Let me tell you about Scott. Met Scott through the business community and we were working together to make our team and our organization good, better, keep growing to the next level. And out of that, we built great relationship, friendship, where we'd kind of hang out. We'd go out together after work sometimes and, and just talk and, and hang. And, and uh, I get a phone call from him one day. He says, hey, I, um, I, I'm dealing with this client. I'm dealing with this business situation. And it kind of went south on me, and, and I'm trying to figure out how to get it back on track. He says, doesn't the Bible say something about dot, dot, dot? 
invited me into a first base conversation. I said, well, actually it does. And here's, here's what God says about that kind of thing. Here's his, his design for it. And it just started opening up that door. I, I could tell you about my friend Mike who committed his life to God at a leadership event that we were both at, and he wanted to find a church. And so he came to our church because our relationship. I can tell you about Jody, who I met at another business leadership event. And my goal at that event was just to lead a bunch of business leaders through how how to get better as better leaders and and get better at what they do. And out of that, we just kind of built a friendship and, and we, we talked offline and found out, she found out that I was playing in a band. And so she said, I want to bring some friends and we're going to come. So she came and, and watched us play. And, and during the break, she came up to me and she goes, hey, I just found out you're a Christian. I just found out you're a pastor. I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike and I, we, you know, we belong to this church. We're part of this church and we, we have fun and we play out on weekends and we play on Sunday morning and and she goes, well, I I'm used to be Jewish, and I'm giving my life over to Christ. I'm, I'm starting to follow Christianity. And she started coming to our church. She said, I'm looking for a place to connect. And she came, and she started learning, and she started getting involved in some small group stuff. And she ended up moving in a, a, a way, but she, I found out she started attending another church and was baptized into Christ. <laughs> I mean, listen. I could go on and on with with stories like this. I literally could. Like all day, I could tell you stories like this about how when you open up and you start to understand, the world runs the bases backwards. Instead of trying to drag them around the bases like we do this way, so you got to do it this way, they're not ready for that. They're only hearing over here. So meet them at third base, add value into their life, build relationship with them, and, and they'll open up. Some will, some won't. But they're more likely to open up that way than they would if you're dragging them around saying, here's why you have to listen to me. There are more mission fields than just coming to church. We have a tool for evangelism to make the most of opportunities of the multiple mission fields in our lives. It's a powerful tool to run the bases backwards. The world is going the other way. We're not going to stop that. I think the church has has tried valiantly with a noble intent to try to reverse the water of of the world. I don't think you're going to do that. I don't think we're going to do that. I think on some measure, we need to consider, how can I run with them? How can I run with them? A little bit. Go where they're going. Not be conformed to the pattern, because you already know the, the pattern that God wants, the way God developed. Don't, don't be conformed to it. Don't buy into their mixed up priorities, but you know where they are, so you might as well meet them there. The world's going the other way. We've got to consider how to run with them, not against them. And I think that's the reputation that the church has gotten for years. What are you against now? What are you mad about now? Why are we going to hell today? You know, that's, that's the message that the church has been. And I'm not saying jump into the water full on with them. In fact, you remember how, you know how you spot, spot a counterfeit? You don't, you don't figure out what all the counterfeit techniques are being used. The way to spot a counterfeit is you have to know crystal clear what a real bill looks like. When you know this is what it's supposed to look like. This is the way God designed it. When you know that, you can spot a counterfeit a mile away. We can live that out in front of a watching world and show them without simply telling them, but we can show them. And it's not an either or proposition, which way to run the bases. I I think it's a both and. This is how God grows us up, but this is how God reaches the world that is lost without him. So I want you to consider what is your stream or streams of influence. Where has God placed you? We are undercover agents. We are ambassadors, cleverly disguised as salesmen, as teachers, as computer programmers, as real estate agents, as chiropractors, as members of a board, 
as harmless retirees. God has uniquely placed all of us somewhere in the world on purpose. And where God has put you on the map, he's put you on mission. So as we close today, I want you just to think and ask God, where, where is that? Help me to get clarity on that. You know you have one. You have one here of what we can do together. That's great. But your faith has to extend beyond these walls. You know that, right? It means nothing if it, it only has power in here. So your faith has to extend beyond these walls. So my question for you is, when you are dispersed out of here, what stream has God put you in? And I want you to get clarity with that. And I want you to live with intentionality, with purpose, and to run the bases backwards with those people in that stream. But you got to know what that is. You got to know what it is. So let me ask you just to bow with me. And let's close by just, God, we want to allow you in this time, maybe in this, just this next week, the, the rest of today that you could help bring clarity into our lives, that you would speak to us and to show us where you have placed us. This is exactly the model that Jesus did. He, Jesus didn't just stay in heaven and bless us from afar. He came, Emmanuel, God with us, to show us not just to tell us, but to show us. It's why he became God with flesh. So he could walk with us, he could talk with us, he could interact with us, he could show us what it's like in different scenarios, in real life. What does this really look like? He didn't stay in a comfortable little gathering around uh, uh, other believers. He mixed with people in different arenas and use his influence to call people back, to show them the way. In fact, that's what we celebrate as we celebrate communion together. That's exactly what we do. But would you lead us, using the example of Jesus, to model for us what's it like to be salt, to be light, to make the most of every opportunity that you present for us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, here's what I want to ask you to do. If, if you haven't already gotten your, your communion, the elements are on the back table back there. You're welcome just to get up and go get them right now. I'm going to give you just a couple mi more minutes. I want you just to kind of sit in quiet, and I want you just to allow God to, to bring clarity in you. Just look to him as the model. He demonstrated for us what it's like to be salt, to be light, to be influencers in the world. He, he showed us that very thing. He said, I'm not just going to speak to you from afar. I'm not just going to demand and point my finger. I'm going to come down. I'm going to be with you, and I'm going to walk the bases with you. I know you're hurting. I want to help you. I know you need relationships. I want to give you a family. I, I know you've got work to do in your own life. I want to transform you. I know you have an empty part. There's part of you that wants to make a, 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 an impression in this world. I want to give you purpose, and I want to give you strength. I want you to live a home run life. Let's celebrate that together as you take the bread and you take the cup. And let's just say, thank you, God. God, it's always good to be in your presence with your people. That's where we find ourselves right now. It's always good. It's good for our hearts. It's good for us to see people, to hug people, to touch people, to know that we are part of something bigger than ourselves. But you didn't bring us here just to pump us up, just to make us feel good. You've called us here because you're about ready to disperse us. You're about ready to launch us off this aircraft carrier to go on mission for the next six days before we gather back together again. 
would you just bring clarity, speak to our hearts about how you would use us. Help us to be influencers, not the influenced. We want to make a difference, doing something that makes a difference with people who want to make a difference at a time that makes a difference, and that time is now. We thank you, we praise you, and we want to live for you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a great, great week.